West Ham have beaten Arsenal 3-1. We have smashed them, demolished them, crushed them. It could have happened to a better team with everything that's happened over the summer, the build-up to this first ever Declan Derby. That's what I'm going to call it because the fans have been at each other's throats for the entire summer over the transfer of Declan Rice. I have to say from a West Ham perspective, they have been insufferable. Let's be fair, West Ham are shit. You're not a good club, you're crap. Are you sure about that? Trying to rub it in our faces, talk down on our club, and the first game the two sides play, we slap them. They will cry and say, oh, it's our B team, it's our B team. Let's have a look at that B team, right? So Ramsdale, really key player for them in their title race last season. Ben White, another key player. Gabriel, key player in their title race last season. One of, the, one of the first names on the team sheet for them. Zinchenko, key player in their title race last season. Fabio Vieira, big money signing. Arteta's made last season, absolute flop. Havertz, the £65 million pound man. The man that Arteta had to have. He had to sign him. Trossard, who they signed in January and, and they all rate. Enketia scored a hat-trick on the weekend and they was all raving about him. Tommy Asu, another key player for them, coming on 57 minutes into the game. Still plenty of time to play. Declan Rice, we're going to talk about him coming on. We're going to talk about a lot about Declan Rice, Declan Rice's reception, all of that. But then Saka coming at 66 minutes, right? He had half an hour to play with added time. Odegaard, Martinelli, all played yesterday. If you have designs of being serious contenders and potential Premier League champions, I don't want to hear no crying about B team. Arteta clearly thought, he clearly had the arrogance to think that the team that he put out was good enough to beat West Ham at home. This guy thinks he is Pep so much. He thinks Arsenal are Man City, but you're not. Know your limitations. He thinks he can rotate like that against the Premier League side and come away with a win. First half, we were really poor. I don't think we managed a single shot on target. We had like zero shots, zero shots on target and one goal, which is classic, which was a beautiful header for Ben White. Ah, oh, brilliant. The leap, the direction, outstanding. So great header from, from Ben White, lovely goal. Puts us in the lead and we're sort of two poor teams in the first half. Atmosphere yesterday was brilliant. That's what... The Everton game was missing on Sunday. That atmosphere, that, that cauldron-like heat. That made me realise that this fixture now is different than it's ever been. It's always had that little bit of a London derby edge. But now the edge is sharper. There's a lot more tension between the two different fan bases. And it brought out a good atmosphere, you know. Second half comes out and we come out like a different team. We were excellent in the second half. Excellence could not be summed up any better than that goal from Kudus, right? Oh my God, the ball from Aguet and the, the pick out Kudus like that was brilliant. The touch brought it down, took it round Zinchenko, through Gabriel's legs, mugged him off completely and into the back of the net. Absolutely brilliant goal. Guy is unbelievable. He is a joy to watch. He is one of those players that is the reason why you go out in the pissing rain and wind, pay your money to watch your football team because he is pure entertainment. And that is what it's about. Love seeing him on the ball. Love his, his commitment, his work rate, his skill. And he's going to be a very important player for us, without a doubt. Then they bring on Declan Rice. So no, here comes Declan Rice. Oh, they're bringing on the big guns now. This will sort us out. And what happened when they brought on Declan Rice? They conceded a third goal. Absolute banger from Bowen. Yeah, Ramsdale probably could have done better. It was right at him. Should have stood strong. Tried to get both hands to it. He tries to do a dramatic camera save. And it backfires and goes in the back of the net. But brilliantly taken by Bowen. He was excellent in that game. He ran the show. That is what we need to see from Jared Bowen. That is why he deserves to be our highest paid player, without a doubt. From there, we just went into cruise control. And that is a bit frustrating for me when we do that. When we get to that point where we feel like we've won the game, we just take our foot off the pedal. We never really put teams to the sword. 
You know, they eventually get their consolation, which meant nothing. And that's, at this point, it's another game where we don't get a clean sheet. I don't want to moan too much, but I think we've got like two clean sheets the whole season in all comps. It's it's really poor and something that needs to be addressing. Because I think that is our defensive issues and that lack of concentration. When I see their goal, it was. It was like lack of concentration. We were sort of like, oh, it's going to be over soon with one. We have to be more ruthless than that, if you ask me. But ultimately, the result is what matters. And look, Rice got a very interesting reception. He warmed up, clapped the fans. Fans clapped him back. Then he come on. There were a lot more boos than I expected. Every time he touched the ball, there were boos in the stadium. And I think part of that was fans sort of pushing back at the media and Arsenal fans trying to tell us what we should do. Uh, West Ham fans, you shouldn't boo Declan White Rice. He won you a trophy. I'm, I want to put that to bed for a start. Declan Rice did not win West Ham a trophy. West Ham won West Ham a trophy. We can go to the final, that key game. He had like a 5 out of 10 performance. Didn't really do much in the game. And that's not me trying to knock him. It just wasn't one of his better games. Said Ben Rama takes that penalty so well. The pressure was on. Brintley took it. Emerson was unbelievable that game. Bowen scored a last minute winner. When it was 1-0, potentially going into extra time. So don't tell me that Rice won us the trophy. Yes, he was an important player in that competition for us. But to say he won it is an absolute joke and really disrespectful to the rest of the players and the coaching staff who played a massive part in us getting that trophy. I think a lot of the fans just didn't like being told what to do in their own stadium in a game that they pay their money in. It was a bit pantomime, you know, and I, and I think it added to the edge when he did come on, like the heat levels rose to an, a, another level. There was some great chance, which I think is fine. It's part of the game. What a waste of money. Should have signed for a big club. Yeah, it's the banter of the game. It's brilliant. For me, I didn't clap him. I didn't boo him. I didn't cheer him. The only time I clapped him was when at the end he came around the fans and clapped all the fans. Yeah, I clapped him back. Fair play. Fair enough. The game's over. We've won. You're coming over to clap us. Declan came out and did a post afterwards. Says, despite the result, love being back at the stadium and seeing so many familiar faces. Thank you, West Ham fans, for the reception. We'll be forever grateful to all of you. Wish you all nothing but the best for the rest of the season. See you soon. And that's fair play. Some people might look at it as PR Declan Rice. He knows how to say the right things. But you have to take him at face value. I take him at face value. Look. He obviously was happy to be back, misses the fans, and yeah, he got. He knew once that full-time whistle was going and he got clapped, he said, like, okay, yeah, it's just the game, it's just part of the game, it's what it is, it's nothing personal. Yeah, do you know what, it couldn't happen to a nicer fan base, to be honest with you, Like, and this ain't all Arsenal fans, but they're sitting there boasting about their little stickers, you just sold your star to Mikel Arteta, right, boasting about these pathetic stickers that they've gone and designed and had printed, all oh, coming to your stadium, your away in tomorrow, wow, you can leave your stickers, but you leave without a win, mate, and, and without being into the next round, we just scored three past your record transfer fee. But yeah, a lot of them are salty, complaining about our fans, calling our fans disgrace. And I love the tears. And then they'll try and dismiss it. Oh, we got bigger fish to fry. Oh, it's just a Carabao Cup. We don't care about that. Bigger fish to fry. And that tells you, doesn't it, everything about the, the mentality that Arteta has instilled in this fan base. What a winning mentality that is. That cup competitions aren't important we don't need to win this trophy we don't need to win that trophy what an elite mentality that you have to sit there and think you can look down on any trophy this is a trophy that man city have made their bread and butter for years and years right getting that trophy early and letting that set the tone for the end of the season for when they push for the other trophies how did you get on with those bigger fish last season when you had bigger fish to fry after going out of all the other competitions. Didn't go well, did it? You can try and act like you don't care. Best believe if we lost that, we would never hear the end of it. We would never hear the end of that if we lost that game. Okay, we'll come back in the league. Yeah, and see what happens. They may beat us in the league, but it don't matter. We won the first one, and I will take that all day long. Should this be the team that we play in the league? I'm, I'm leaning towards yes. I thought Mavropanos was excellent yesterday, but Zuma, to, for me, still starts. He's still the captain, the main man. 
So in the Premier League, Zuma would start. But Ward Prowse for Suchek. And then I think you've got the makings of, of our first team. And then you have Antonio to come off the bench, which I think is, is his role now. Hopefully we can build on this performance. We can build on this momentum. That was so important. On to the next round. Liverpool away. It is so typical, isn't it? For West Ham. We beat Arsenal and you think, OK, we deserve a, a lower team now. And then we get drawn at Anfield. It's pathetic. And I see a stat saying that something like in the last 10 years, we've drawn 17 big six sides, right? And 10 of those have been away. No wonder we're struggling to fucking win trophies in this competition when we're always getting shit draws and trying to make the best of it. Look, we go there. Maybe Liverpool will think that they're too good. Maybe they'll think their second team can beat us. But we're not out. And like everyone says, you've got to beat these teams some stage. It's just better if you can leave it to the final because then the final's there. It's like anything can happen. And you're at a neutral ground. We beat Liverpool. It's a strong, strong chance then because we've got... Man United are out, Man City are out, Arsenal are now out. The big challenge that's left in this competition, the biggest two challenges are Liverpool and Newcastle. I don't look at Chelsea as that team right now, but it's Liverpool and Newcastle. So we beat Liverpool, it's just Newcastle left. And I'll be buzzing to win this competition, but we've got to get past Liverpool at Anfield. Let's see, go and win our group in Europe and just get that positivity back. Still some concerns there for me. The Brentford game is going to be interesting to see what he does. But we need to kick on. We've got some winnable games coming up. And let's just hope that that Everton game was just a blip. Happy Hammers. Arsenal fans in the mud where they belong. Come on, you irons.